Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. However, we are actually going to be leaving this sewing room for the first part of this video because we are going back to what I sewed while I was in Hawaii. Now, there is not very much of this project that was actually sewn in Hawaii, because so we'll be back in this sewing room very, very quickly. But as you know, if you saw last week's video, I am currently working on an 1830s doll dress project where last week I made the dress and the capelet. This week I am making the chamois set, the bonnet, and maybe some other accessories as well. I guess we'll see how much I actually get done in the last few days of this week here since it is now already Friday since I've gotten back from Hawaii. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to what I was working on while I was in Hawaii and check out the chamois set. This is the chemise set. So you can see the pattern pieces are right here. So we've got the chemise set. I think this is the fronts right here. This is the back, which is cut on the fold. These are just like single layers. And then there's a little collar and that is going to have lace applied. And then there's tape that will go through the channels of the chemise set and some neckline binding. And that's about it on there. So I have started working on the chemise set here. So I've done a few steps today. The first one was that I I did this seam, just a straight seam, and instead of doing a back stitch like I've been doing, which I think is overkill, I just did a running stitch here, and then it said to finish off the edges either with a serger or by whip stitching, so I whip stitched, because obviously I don't have a serger on vacation. So I whip stitched that together, and I've just finger pressed this whole thing, but I finger pressed this front edge here, just with like a 1 8 inch seam allowance, and that is whip stitched down, and then this is ready to be whip stitched over here about the same seam allowance and it is finger pressed in place and yeah it's all pinned in place and ready to be whip stitched tomorrow. So yeah, that was actually all I got done in Hawaii on the chamois set. I know it wasn't very much. However, yesterday, which was my first day back here in Washington, I was at rehearsal all day and at lunch I did wind up sewing down the edges that you had seen me pin down before. So now the next step is to make the channels for the twill tapes to run through that will basically tie it around the body. So that is done by folding down the sections in the very front up here and also in the back. So for the chemise set, I had sandwiched the lace between the right sides of the collar, and I've now turned that out. I clipped the corners and turned that out. And I also stitched the channels for the twill tape down there. And now what I've done is I've matched up the collar with the neckline of the rest of the chemise set. It did seem like the chemise set neckline was a little bit large. There was a step at this point to stay stitch the neckline of the chemise set body but I think that should have been done first because it's been like floating around in my sewing bag for so long that I think it stretched out a little so I stretched out the neckline of the collar too and it, now they match so now I'm going to sew those together but I think I'm actually going to combine the binding at the same step so I have this little strip for the binding and one edge is going to get pressed down and the other edge is going to get matched up with this that way I can do all three layers at once and and then this will already be pressed, so I'll just turn it to the inside and stitch that down and thread my little tape through and the chemise set will be done. I stitched down the inside of the binding on the chemise set and I added a hook, metal hook, and also a thread bar. So let me undo that so you can see what that looks like. So basically you just do a little like chain stitch on there. I do about four or five of them to do a thread bar. For one, it recommended it or suggested it, but for two, I couldn't find any bars that went with this size of silver hook. So yeah, I had to do that. And then I also threaded my ties through with the bodkin right here. So you do want to make sure that your channels are large enough to get your bodkin through. It just fit. And I've got my little tool tape in there. So that means the shimmy set is done and it's time to go put it on the doll. So I've decided to switch to the bonnet for a little bit here. So the first step of the bonnet is preparing the top of the crown and they say to do that you are going to take the buckram piece here and put a little bit of glue on the inside here and press all of the notched edges down. Now I'm doing this out of silk so I'm really hoping with there's no mulling on this bonnet and this pattern instructions so I'm hoping that none of this glue will wind up showing through the outside of the silk. Also, I think my glue was not hot enough. Well, 
you can definitely see the texture of the buckram through. I think you can see that there. But I don't really see the glue itself discoloring anything. However, it looks like I did snip one a little too close because it's kind of fraying there. So maybe I'll put some fray check on and see if that will work. Then we're doing basically the same thing for this piece right here. Now the back of the buckram gets glued together and then this gets lapped over and hand stitched in place before the top gets glued in over the edge like that. Just a quick note, something that the pattern doesn't mention is that you do actually have to notch this because otherwise this can't be pinched down. So another change that I'm going to make is that I'm actually going to redo the top part of the crown here. Now I've done a lot of millinery. Always when you're putting the top of a crown in, you do take the buckram and you notch it and basically fit it in as well. Instead of just lapping over the top, this pattern basically wants you to just put it on and then like whip stitch the top. That's not going to work as you can see. I mean, even if this piece was perfectly the right shape and size to fit in here, it's just going to be like flimsy and weird to not have that notch. So I'm recutting this. I am going to recut both the silk and the outer with this piece right here, notch both of them together like I do on a normal hat, and then probably glue and possibly whip stitch them into place in this hat here. So I have just gone through and prepped the brim, which means basically creating like a little pocket where I have the buckram sandwiched between both sides of the silk. Around the exterior here, I have hand whipped all of that in place, catching the buckram. Here, this is a machine stitch, not catching the buckram. And then I've clipped that curve. Now this is going to get attached to the crown and the crown is basically going to line up to just outside of that row of stitching. And I'm gonna sew that on by hand. So this pattern included a step that I think was really exceedingly difficult on this small of a scale, which was to actually like sew this by machine. This is the lining, the inside of the top of the crown lining, and to sew the side of the crown to the top by machine. That was so hard on this tiny of a scale, but I feel like it would actually be really useful for like a human size bonnet. So I might have to try that in the future, but this is messy. So I'm glad it's lining. So I forget if I told you, but I did attach the brim to the crown. As you can see, it's little hand stitches that hold it in place. And then I've also put in the lining here, which is also hand stitched in place. Now, the one thing that I think is a little weird about this pattern is that there's no wire around the brim. And as you can see, my brim is kind of like folding down at the top there. So the next step is to do the binding. Really, it's the last step, but I think I might actually put some wire in the brim first if I can figure out how to do that now that I have the silk on and then put the binding on. I went ahead and wired the brim as you can see. Even though it wasn't flat, I was able to do most of it by machine basically until I got to down here and then I whip stitched this portion on. So now let's do the binding and then we can decorate. So the base of the bonnet is now complete. I finished all of the binding along the edges. Now that said, it honestly seems like a little small. Like, it's very small in the crown compared to Samantha's head. I've tried to kind of put her hair up into a bun because it does say, like, you need to put your doll's hair into a bun or at least a half bun to hold it on the head. But as you can see, like, I put it on and it just kind of falls. Maybe with the ribbon ties, it'll be a little better. I could also try the half bun. The bangs, I know, look ridiculous with 1830s. But, uh, yeah, it does seem a little on the small side. So let's start to decorate it and see how that goes. I have finished decorating the bonnet, so I added this ivory eyelet trim all the way around the outside or the underside of the brim, and then in the back I made this little rosette that it's actually made of like the cutoff piece from the long ribbon that I put on the crown, and I just had a little bit more on one side than the other because it was two pieces of ribbon that I joined together. I don't know if I covered it but basically there's a seam under there and I also had this bow that is also the same ribbon so I did the bow and cut off that and then glued it on sewed the two lengths of this ribbon together and put it around the brim did a little like pinch right here and just put a spot of glue there and a spot of glue there and then I glued the bow to the ribbon I glued this little 
bit of millinery flowers in underneath the bow and I glued the rosette to the ribbon as well. So really the only glue on the outside of here I think that's on the bonnet is right here and right here. Everything else is just to the ribbon. But yeah, it's looking quite cute. The other thing that I did, at first I had tied it on under her chin and it was still doing that gappy thing right back here. So I actually just took a straight pin and I just put a little pin right there. I don't even know if you can see it. It's black so it blends in. And I just pinned it in through her bun. That seems to be working. So for the Lacy Pellerine, I have pressed in and done a little narrow hem on the machine here. This is just pressed up but I'm not really sure what's happening to it because it's only been pressed up once. And now I'm applying the lace. I'm using the same lace that I used for the chemise set so it is pre-gathered lace. It's just going to go along the outside here. And there's also going to be a piece of binding that again I'm going to press the sides down. I'm going to try and do this all at once because the binding will sandwich the lace all around here and then the binding gets turned to the other side and I think that's basically it for the pelerine. Oh I'll also have to do binding on the neckline I guess. So I nearly forgot that part of this before the neck binding went on was to put the lace around the neckline. So I've got the lace around the neckline, I've got the neck binding on, everything needs to be hand sewn on this side so I'm gonna go off and do a bunch of hand sewing and show you what it looks like when it's done. I've stitched everything down now on this little pelerine and I added the hook right here as well as a thread bar like I did on the chemise set. You can see that right there. So that means that this little pelerine is done. Now this pelerine would not be worn at the same time as the capelet that I made last week. It's like one or the other. Same with the chemise set basically. It's this or it is this and this can be worn with the capelet so but this one is by itself so we'll kind of see what options I like best for how everything looks. Now that everything is done, let's go ahead and get her all dressed up in her new pieces. Now, of course, this is a bit scandalous since I did not make her stays or a chemise, and I did not have time to do the petticoat either. Here is the chemise set with its little lace around the collar. If I hadn't opted to go with the chemise set, we could put the pelerine on instead. So this is what the pelerine would look like. I do kind of wish that it would go together like this. I feel like I'm more used to seeing pelerines closed in the front, so I might decide to add a couple more hooks and thread bars as we go down the front like that, because that seems like a better look. But with the chemise set, we can also add the capelet. Which looks like that. Now we'll add her bonnet and she'll be all set. So overall, I'm very happy with how her ensemble came out. And honestly, like, if I had not done a lot of this as hand sewing, I probably could have made this entire ensemble from start to finish in about like a day or two, maybe even less than that, depending on how much machine sewing I had done. The bonnet did take a lot of hand sewing that you really can't do by machine. So I suppose that other than the bonnet, it would probably all be doable in about like a day and then the bonnet might be its own day. So yeah, I'm very pleased with how it came out. And actually I like it so much that I might even make one for myself. This may very well be my fall project for 
for next year to make myself a pumpkin 1830s look because it's super cute and I actually have been wanting an 1830s dress made out of cotton because I think all of my 1830s dresses are silk if I'm remembering correctly and it would be nice to have something that's just like a little bit easier and you know less worrisome to wear and I love how all of the different accessories can really change up the look of the outfit too and the bonnet is just gorgeous so yeah very very pleased with this I mean I can't recommend Pemberley Threads patterns highly enough they really went together so so well I think I mentioned like the one or two things that I would have done differently especially for the bonnet but like honestly overall like the shapes are great everything went together perfectly like one shape to another shape which was nice sometimes you don't get that in like you know small business pattern companies sometimes you don't and it really did work well so yeah this was really fun just like a nice little project stepping away from you know big historical projects for me which is what I'm going to start doing next week so do make sure that you check back next week because we'll be beginning that 18th century stays journey and I am scared so it was nice to have kind of a nice easy project that could be done relatively quickly beforehand so if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Mirage. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!